Hey, Ashley, all things history.com. So in front of you, you see our oral, one of our oral surgery kits. And before I got to a residency, it was a little, a little rusty on the names of my instruments and sort of what to use. So I, I, I uh, asked Dr. Partridge to come and take a, give me a hand, and here he is. So without further ado. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mark. Uh, this is, uh, we also have two sets. This is basically what we call our complex set for complex extractions. Uh, and this has what I call 90% of all the instruments you need. Uh, you can't include 100% because that would take three or four trays full. So you set up basically 90% of the instruments you always need, and then if you need an extra instrument such as a uh, rongeurs or maybe you need a, a 23 forceps or a 65 for bicuspid, you can add that as you need it. But your basic complex set should have about 95% of the instruments you, you use. If you're doing a lot of simple, like number eights and sevens and things like that, you may have a much simpler kit with only half these sets. You probably won't need the osteotome and the, and the mouth and things, so that's up to you. But uh, again, it has about 90% of the instruments that you need. And uh, we'll just go on some sort of order here. Of course, the first one you always have is your sterilized uh, syringe for anesthesia. Uh, you know, one of the things that we have here are the, not the uh, auto aspirate, but they actually engage, so you can aspirate in a few different. Have you had any experience with the auto ones? Auto no, I haven't used those yet. Hmm. Right, next but, uh, There's always something new. <laughs> always something new. Yeah, this is a, a tongue retractor. I don't really use this that much. Usually, our oral surgeons who have the patients today, it's a little bit bulky for the patients, but uh, this is a Vitor tongue uh, retractor. It works quite well, but uh, it's a little tough on patients that are still awake. Uh, this is a pickup, so it looks a lot like a hemostat, but if you look real carefully at the nibs, only the top of the nibs engage and the rest of it doesn't engage, so it's a pretty uh, convenient tooth for picking up a tooth or tooth fragments. It's got a handle. Usually we use a Bard Parker number 15 blade most of the time, but you can use other blades. This is our Copeland suction, which I use for surgical suction. It has a narrow tip, which is good for getting down inside of uh, tooth sockets and stuff. It's a little slow if you're really irrigating out the mouth with large amounts of fluid and it backs up, so in that case we'll go to switch over to the Yonkers, switch to the acrylic one, and that'll suck up about four or five times faster than the, uh, than the surgical pickup. It'd be nice if you have two, both those at the same time. When you're irrigating out, if your field is flooded, you have to wait till it's dry to really do irrigation. What I'll do is intermittent irrigation. I'll 10 cc's and then I'll suction it all out, and once it's dry, then you irrigate it some more 10 cc's in and out like that. Since you're talking about irrigation, this is what we've been using too. Uh, we use a 33, uh, 30 cc syringe and you need lots of irrigation always use tons of irrigation uh, as compared to uh, well this those is good guys. for this for, this is actually for patient treatment for irrigating dry sockets and other things like that but this is the one we use and this one is absolute uh, is sterilized I always want to come up with an idea of having a camel pack with uh, unlimited uh, <laughs> irrigation so somebody wants to go ahead and make one of those and patent it maybe make a few dollars on the side there uh, we have a number of hemostats. We have the straight hemostat, just depends on which area you're working at. Pretty well self-explanatory. And then the curved hemostat, which has a little tip for getting into tighter areas. Now the hemostat has a straight serrated nib, if you, you probably cannot see that on the camera. It's just a serrated in one direction there. Now we have the needle holders that look pretty close to that, but if you look at the needle holders, it's a crosshatch pattern on there, so it grabs the needle at any angle that you want. So that's the difference between the nibs on the uh, uh, hemostat and needle holder besides the basic design is that the hemostat has just simple uh, serrations and the needle holders cross hatch. The Dean scissors, which is very handy for cutting off, of course, sutures, but it's also for small pieces of tissue and, and tags and things like that. And it's got a slight angle on it so you can reach down into areas that are hard to access. Now the Russians are used for retracting teeth or tooth fragments in there. And again, it just hits right at the nibs there, so a little bit like the tooth pickup thing there. It's pretty good for getting little tight areas and picking out little tooth fragments. And of course the cotton pliers which you can use for uh, moving cotton and other uh, medicaments around on your, on your table. Uh, we'll go through some of our, uh, well here's, a, we'll go for the uh, molt mouth prop. Now this is pretty convenient because you can open it up pretty wide and you can adjust it for the patient. The only problem with the mouth molt bar, it's, it's the way the design is, as you release it, it actually opens it wide. So if you want to release it, it's almost like a two-fingered thing it's a little bit awkward to use but it's uh, it's it's a little better in some ways than the standard mouth prop because the area in between here is a little bit open uh, our forceps uh, generally we'll start out with the, the smallest for uh, I mean our elevators excuse me uh, our 301 and once you work that in between the tooth and get a little luxation then you get a little bigger area you can use the 34 elevator to expand that and get a little more uh, luxation with it I gotta mention this one sir okay that's 77 I was, well I always start out with this <laughs> Uh, this is the one that our, our Canadian friends kind of introduced us to, but it becomes very popular with all of our residents and the staff. It's got a little curved end on it, and for 
uh, certain areas, upper maxillary thirds and stuff. It just uh, it's really a very uh, convenient instrument. It's really it has a lot of dexterity to it. You can really use that quite a bit. Uh, Cogswell A. Once I get a big area in there, I can get it. I can get the Cogswell A. The other thing I use the Cogswell A for is I use it for sectioning teeth. I'll make a little groove in the tooth, and you can slide it on the narrow one. And then when you wide, turn it sideways 90 degrees, it's really wide, so you can really expand it quite a bit. So that's good for fracture, uh, fracturing off uh, teeth s segments there. And the Cogswell B uh, has a little B uh, has a little bend in it. That's the way I remember it. It's got a little point on it. So sometimes you have a little fragment you can't quite get out. I'll just uh, drill a little hole in the fragment, put it right in there, and you can. Uh, lever that off of the uh, alveolar crest and, and, and remove fragments that way. Also you can also sometimes if you want to start the luxation and if you can't get any other elevator you get that little tiny tip in there and that works out very conveniently. Uh, Miller's left and right uh, they're curved in opposite directions as you can see and those are good for getting out uh, uh, root fragments sometimes on mandibular teeth but also sometimes on Third molars, maxillary third molars, you really don't deliver it occlusally, you kind of bring it out to the buckle side and so sometimes you can slip that in there and pop it out to the buckle side rather than trying to deliver the tooth uh, occlusally. So it's another little convenient uh, design there to get into the tight areas. Now these are acquired east and west uh, instruments you can see. Now I really like these for uh, mandibular uh, broken off root tips because you can get through the opposite socket so you have a mesial root tip that's still retained, you can put it through the distal socket elevate out the mesial or vice versa, go through the mesial empty socket and, and elevate the, uh, uh, the distal root tip. So those are very, oh, those are very handy for uh, root tips. Okay. Guess you can edit that. Ah, we'll keep going. Okay, all right. <laughs> a little, little interruption there. Uh, these so are root tip picks. Uh, uh, the name is uh, self-explanatory when you have small root tips that are down inside of the socket. And you see they're curved on opposite directions, so you have kind of a right and a left one there. So those are very useful for some, some sort of uh, retained root tips. The Selden Retractor is the one I use quite a bit. I really like this for retracting uh, gingival tissue to get it out of the way. Uh, it doesn't stretch the patient's mouth out it's quite so much and get back in there. The only problem is you have to watch real carefully when you're using your burr and other instruments because uh, it can rub against the burr. So for that reason a lot of people use the Minnesota. It's a little bigger and you can see it's a wider area. It retracts quite a bit of tissue there and uh, it's a little safer with the burr there. But it does stretch the patient's mouth out. It's a little more uncomfortable and sometimes it's a little tighter area. Just whatever works best in your hands. Bone file. Anytime I use uh, the hand piece, I always use a bone file, make sure there's no sharp edges or anytime you have uh, something a periodontally involved ridge where it's really irregular uh, edges on there, I always, uh, actually I'll put the flap over feel my finger for feeling sharp edges, I use the bone file to trim that down. Uh, this is a Woodson, which I use uh, quite a bit to initiate my flap after I make my incisions with a scalpel. I just find this little sharp edge down here and these is a little better to initiate the flap. It's kind of weak so once I get the flap uh, exposed then I'll uh, Ex uh, exploit that with a uh, with the number nine uh, molt, which is a little stronger instrument. The other thing I use that number nine molt, uh, the, the pointed tip sometimes is to use it almost like an elevator to get in between two teeth. And once you initiate it, again you can switch over to your bigger elevators. But that's pretty good for getting the little tight areas in between teeth. Uh, this is one of my favorite little instruments. It's a number fifteen scaler. I use this for a number of things. Uh, once you lay a flap, you have a tooth that's partially exposed or partially impacted. There's going to be a lot of periodontal uh, ligament or, or uh, follicular material around it. You can't really see it real well. So I like to curate that off with it and that the material will also jam up your burr. So that's good for cleaning off that too. The other thing I use that for is sometimes real tiny little root tips. You can get down in there and pick out a little root tip pick with it. And I also say it's my sixth finger. I'm, I've been doing dentistry so long. I, when I scratch it, it's something I can find it. I know by touch whether it's alveolar bone, dentin, or enamel. So sometimes I'm going around there trying to delineate the tooth I can just kind of feel stuff down there and by the scratching I can tell what it is. This is your double-ended curette again kind of self-explanatory when I curette out uh, uh, leftover granulation tissue or a follicular material and it's a left and a right-handed depending on which end of the shaft you use there. Very useful instrument. And uh, this is a mallet and osteotome. Some people call it a hammer and a chisel. Uh, it's a little healthier than your, uh, your regular periotome as you can see. And on the mallet, you'll notice it has a nylon tip on the end of it, a little cushioning area on there. 
and that's in there, it acts like a shock absorber a little bit. If you have metal against metal, it's really jarring on the patient. The other thing that acts kind of like a skid protection so that when you're hammering, it doesn't slide off and hit the patient in the jaw. Uh, these will scratch and wear out in time, so what I would recommend as soon as you get this instrument that you look at the insert and you order a couple extra sets of the nylons to keep those around for quite a while because the mallet itself will probably never wear out in your entire career, but these little nylon things can uh, wear out occasionally. And then our standard forceps that we put in here are your 150, which is pretty universal for most teeth, uppers, and even a few lower ones. Uh, the other one you can use is a 151. Again, it's got a slight angle on it, so it's good for lower teeth. And then the one I like quite a bit is the, actually is a 151S. It looks like a 151, except it's a little smaller. It's a pitot instrument, and uh, the reason I use that is because these nibs are a lot smaller, and uh, especially for maxillary thirds, it's kind of hard to get that 150 all the way back in there sometimes. This will slip in there, and if you've got a big uh, coronary process or a big buccinator muscle in that, that thing uh, it will get into tight areas a lot, lot easier. So those, those are usually the only standard forceps we have. Again, when you're setting up and planning your tooth, you want to, uh, planning your extraction, you want to look for other uh, tooth-specific forceps, like the 23 or maybe the 65 for bicuspid. And again, some additional things you may add to it are the rongeurs. If you're going to do some bone trimming, uh, of course the syringe is always enclosed. And we always have uh, our, our, our extra, uh, suction tips. extra suction tips, extra needles and irrigation cups. Uh, we always use uh, uh, saline, we don't use sterile water because you want it to be physiologically uh, compatible with the tissues because you have it exposed. So I would not use sterile water anytime you're laying a flat. Make sure you always use a physiological saline to irrigate it out. And we also have some of the other things that are included. We have a sterilized aluminum for covering the, the handles, uh, lots of extra cotton, uh, all of the other little things that you need to uh, to do oral surgery. So that's our, our complex set. Again, the basic set, you can, uh, a simple set you can make just based on what things you like to use. But this this will cover 90% of all the instruments you need. And again, just add a couple, two or three instruments is, uh, at the beginning of procedure for every specific tooth or procedure you're doing. And that usually handles it. The only thing we haven't discussed is sutures, but I think we discussed that in another, another lecture. We did, yeah, mm -hmm. very well too. Okay. All right, sir, thanks for your time. And uh, we'll hopefully get you in action using these okay. in the next uh, few weeks. Cheers.